Mary the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Mary the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Rainbow it was a rainy summer day. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat sadly underneath a giant leaf. Then the sun came out and the sky was blue again. But the shower didn't stop. And soon a colourful rainbow stretched across the sky. It's beautiful, they shouted. Berry thought it would be a good idea to climb up the rainbow and slide down on the other side. But his first try didn't work. I think I'll try from the other side, he said. Trust me, you can't climb a rainbow, Dolly said to the excited snail. But then Berry came up with a new plan. I'll use a ladder. Oh, Berry, I don't think it's a good idea, Dolly said anxiously. Dolly was right and Berry was angry. Dolly tried to distract her friend. Come and play something else. But Berry still didn't give up. Look, Dolly, I'm sure I can jump on top of it from here. But that idea didn't work either. Dolly ran over to Berry. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine, Berry sulked. Berry was very sad and Dolly tried everything to cheer him up. I got you some flowers, she said kindly. But Berry couldn't be comforted. Then the rain dried up and the rainbow disappeared. They walked home hand in hand and Dolly said nice things to the little snail. Chin up, Berry. It's your birthday the day after tomorrow and I'm sure you'll get some super presents. Dolly had a great idea when she got home. I'll make a rainbow slide for Berry's birthday, she said to herself. Then his dream can come true and he can slide down a rainbow. Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly helped her. Balthazar, Dolly and Flutter painted the slide with colourful paint, wrapped it in yellow paper and tied it up with a blue ribbon. The three friends even baked a cake for Berry. When the time came, Balthazar and Flutter took Berry to Dolly's house, where everything was ready for the birthday party. Let's give him his presents, yelled Balthazar, and Dolly gave Berry the chocolate cake. A real rainbow, a rainbow slide. Can I try the slide? Sure you can, Dolly replied. Berry liked the rainbow slide very much. He slid on it again and again. Flutter and Balthazar were so happy they started to dance. You know, Dolly, said Berry, it really is a nice present. Thank you. Lots of friends joined in the birthday celebrations. There was Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle, Zephyr the Dragonfly and even Stanley the Stag Beetle came. The little snail let everybody try his new slide. Berry, Dolly and their friends played on the slide until it got dark. Berry went to bed very happy that day. What a wonderful birthday I've had, he sighed with a smile. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
the kite. Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry! Help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet. But he couldn't pull her back. So now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. Oh dear, the wind's blowing us right into the forest. The kite got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try. The others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Kindergarten. One autumn morning, Dolly knocked excitedly on Berry's door. Come quickly, Berry, or we'll be late. Berry got ready and the two friends held hands and walked to the nursery together. Lots of little children were gathered in the playground. They were all so happy to see each other. 
There was Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly, Stanley the stag beetle, Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly, Alfonso the cricket, Leapy the grasshopper and Bubble the baby beetle. Mrs Bumblebee patiently guided everybody into their classrooms. The little, middle and top children went into different rooms. Bubble was in the little group. He waved to Berry and Dolly from the doorway. The day started with exercises. After breakfast, the children made beautiful pictures using the leaves they collected in the woods. When everybody had finished, Mrs Bumblebee gathered the children in a circle. She taught them lots of songs and games. The children all danced around. Then it was playtime. Mrs Bumblebee sat in a rocking chair and watched the children. Berry and the boys ran straight over to the car box and started playing cars. They built ramps and tunnels. Can I join in, boys? Dolly asked. She was holding a broken red car. Oh no, Dolly, you can't play cars with that old thing, Berry told her. And anyway, cars are for boys, not girls. That made Dolly cry. The boys don't want to play with me, she told Flutter. Flutter, Leapy and Zephyr quickly cheered her up. Come and play with us. We're playing with dolls. The girls dressed their dolls in pretty dresses, fed them and rocked them to sleep. Dolly liked this game a lot. Then Berry got into an argument with Morris the Maybug. You keep knocking my car over. It's not fair. You're a cheat. That's not true. You're a cheat, replied Morris. That's it. I'm not playing with you anymore, Berry said sulkily and left the boys. Can I join in your game? Berry asked his friend Dolly. You can't play with us. It's a girl's game, Dolly sulked. But I brought this doll with me. It's got curly hair. I want to play with you. All right. Come and play with us. But now you have to let me play cars with you. Children, time to wash your hands, Mrs Bumblebee shouted. Then go and sit down at the tables. Mrs Earwig, the dinner lady, dished up their dinner. When everybody had finished eating, Berry and Dolly collected up all the plates and glasses. Then the children had a little lie down while Mrs Bumblebee read them a story. They all listened in silence and a few of them fell fast asleep. When they got up, they all had a snack and went out into the playground. It was enormous and filled with all kinds of slides, climbing frames and swings with a big wooden train in the middle. Berry and Morris quickly made friends again and played on the swings together. Dolly helped Bubble up the slide and caught him at the bottom. Bubble liked that a lot. The rest of the day flew by and soon the children were waving goodbye to each other. They couldn't wait for tomorrow to come. Today. The Snowman One cold winter morning, Berry the Snail knocked on Dolly's front door. Let's go and play with my sledge in the snow. Dolly quickly put on her winter coat and her hat, scarf and gloves. She sat on the sledge and the little snail pulled her along. Eventually, the snow stopped. Berry and Dolly enjoyed the winter sunshine. They sledged down the steep side of the hill. Look at that super snowman, Berry shouted. Oh 
Oh dear, we're going to hit it. But it was too late. The sledge ran right into the snowman that stood at the foot of the hill. Did you hurt yourself? Berry asked Dolly. No, I didn't, but I think we've ruined the snowman. Yes, it tipped right over, Berry said. I'm going to eat its carrot nose. Let's have a snowball fight with the snow from the snowman. Berry and Dolly started to throw snowballs. It was a lot of fun. Soon there was almost nothing left of the snowman. Just then, Balthazar the bee appeared and said hello to his friends. Do you want to throw snowballs with us? I'm too busy. I've brought a hat and a scarf to put on my snowman I built yesterday. Haven't you seen it? Barry and Dolly looked at each other. Oh dear, Barry whispered. Balthazar must be looking for the snowman we hit. They didn't dare tell Balthazar that they'd knocked his snowman over. No, we haven't seen a snowman. I can't find my snowman anywhere. Berry and Dolly felt very sorry for the little bee. Don't be sad, Berry said finally. Let's build a new one. OK, Balthazar sniffled. Dolly made the biggest snowball. It went on the bottom. Balthazar made the middle one for the snowman's tummy. And Berry made the smallest snowball for the snowman's head. Then Dolly lifted Berry up so he could stick the head on top. Then the snowman was finished and Balthazar could finally put the stripy scarf around its neck. Berry took a big jump and put the red saucepan on its head for a hat. Hey, it looks really super, Balthazar said enthusiastically. Balthazar, we've got something to tell you. We smashed your first snowman. We slid right into it with our sledge. It was an accident. What? It was you? Balthazar was very surprised, but then he soon forgave his friends. This snowman looks much better than the first one, he declared. Come on, let's sledge down the hill together. Berry, Dolly and Balthazar played with the sledge until it got dark and were very careful not to hit their new snowman. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Alfonso's Fiddle One autumn day, Alfonso the Cricket stood happily playing his fiddle in the mushroom field. The forest friends were all enjoying the lovely music. The little ants were playing football on the hill. But, oh dear, the ball bounced away and knocked the fiddle clean out of Alfonso's hands. Alfonso <laughs> shouted in horror. My fiddle! My fiddle's broken! And then he burst into tears. He was sobbing so loudly that everyone came to see what the fuss was all about. Alfonso pointed angrily at the spotty ball. That ball! That ball is to blame! And those naughty ants! Where am I going to get a fiddle from now? He picked his broken fiddle up, went into his house and slammed the door shut behind him. Alfonso! Alfonso, come out! I'm sure we can help you! Berry pleaded. But Alfonso didn't want to see anybody.
His friends sat sadly in the mushroom field and didn't know what to do. Then Dolly had an idea. I know. Let's make Alfonso a new fiddle. Yes, let's make a new fiddle, Flutter the butterfly nodded. I know who can help us. We have to find Charlie the click beetle. He made Alfonso's first fiddle. The band of friends set off and walked and walked until they reached a blue house. They knocked on the door. A tiny, timid beetle popped his head out. He wore a blue hat and had beautiful dark blue wings. Who are you? he asked. Dolly told Charlie the whole story. Oh, but don't be sad. If that's your problem, I'm happy to help. Alfonso will be playing music on his new fiddle in no time at all. The click beetle gave everybody a job to do. Some collected wood for the body of the fiddle, while others gathered grass for the strings. Now he had everything he needed. Charlie got to work. He sawed, sanded, polished and waxed. And then, like a little miracle, the new fiddle was ready. Can I try it? Dolly asked. No, it's Alfonso's instrument, Flutter told her. But I want to have my own musical instrument, Dolly sulked. Me too, me too, the little ants shouted. Quiet, said Charlie. Why don't you all start an orchestra? A great big orchestra. Like a music band? And everybody could have their own instrument? That's a very good idea. The first thing they made was a harp for Dolly. Stanley the stag beetle got a double bass and Eddie the potato beetle had a cello. Berry made a trumpet out of a lily. Morris the maybug made a horn from a honeysuckle flower. The big spider used horse chestnuts and acorns for drums while Zephyr and Leapy made cymbals out of pebbles. Charlie carved flutes from birch twigs for the ants. Flutter the butterfly got a lute, and Balthazar the bee got a zither. Bubble the baby beetle played a triangle. They all had a quick practice and then headed for Alfonso's house. Alfonso heard the music and looked out of his window to see where it was coming from. He was surprised by what he saw. Please, Alfonso, the little ant began. Don't be mad at us for breaking your fiddle. We'd like you to have this new one as a present. Charlie made it. Alfonso began to play straight away and the sound of his fiddle filled the forest once more. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Stanley Skates. It was a crispy winter day and Barry and Dolly were walking by the lake. It had frozen over and was covered by a very thick layer of ice. Come on, Dolly, let's slide on the ice, the little snail suggested. The ladybird happily agreed. Berry and Dolly stepped cautiously onto the ice. They held on tightly to each other and began to slide slowly around. They soon warmed up. They fell over every now and then, but when they did, they just laughed and carried on playing. Stanley the stag beetle stood and watched them. Stanley, you have to try this. Come and slide with us, it's so much fun, Berry said to his friend. Stanley was slightly scared but stepped onto the ice out of curiosity. Ah! He yelled as his feet slipped out from under him and he fell on his bottom. Berry and Dolly ran over to him. We'll give you a hand, Stanley. The two friends stood either side of Stanley and guided him slowly forward. Now we'll let go of you and you can try by yourself, Dolly told him. Then the snail and the ladybird let Stanley go. 
Slow down, Stanley! Dolly shouted, and Stanley tried to stop, but he stumbled and sped into a patch of prickly bushes. Help! I'm full of prickles and my antler hurts. It hurts a lot. Dolly ran over quickly to take a look at the injured stag beetle. Don't give up! Dolly said, and bandaged Stanley's painful antler with her dotty scarf. Just then, a beautiful girl beetle slid out onto the ice. She moved over the frozen surface of the water as gracefully as can be. Wow! Who are you? I'm Iris the Ice Beetle. Hi, Iris. She's Dolly the ladybird, he's Stanley the stag beetle, and I'm Berry the snail, Berry said. How do you manage to glide on the ice like that? Stanley asked the stranger. Because I'm wearing ice skates, special shoes that can slide on the ice, Iris replied. You have to buckle them to your boots. Did you make them yourself? Berry asked curiously. Yes, I made them. It's really not that difficult. I can make ice skates for all of you if you like. Hooray! The three friends shouted excitedly. Berry, Dolly, Stanley and Iris went to the forest together. Iris sorted through the branches lying on the ground and eventually found one good for the job. They all got to work, sawing and hammering in tiny nails. Everybody did their share. They're finished, Iris eventually announced. And there were three pairs of brand new ice skates sitting on the table. Berry and Dolly felt a little bit nervous as they fastened their new ice skates on. But Stanley was the most worried. Berry and Dolly held on to each other and stepped out onto the ice. Iris helped Stanley. Sliding on the ice is so much better with ice skates, Stanley laughed. Iris held Stanley's hand for a long time before he was happy to slide all on his own. He soon learned how to turn and start and stop. I can do it! I can ice skate! He announced at the end of a very long but happy day. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Harry Hedgehog's birthday. One summer morning, Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybird and their forest friends were playing in the meadow. They were taking turns on the leaf swing. It must be so much fun to play on that swing. And it's a shame I'm too heavy for it, Harry Hedgehog sighed. His friends didn't know what to say. It's Harry Hedgehog's 10th birthday next week, the ladybird said. He'll be 10 years old. The little snail nodded. What do you think he'd like for his birthday? I know! Balthazar exclaimed and jumped to his feet. A swing! That's a super idea! Let's make a big swing for Harry! Dolly said enthusiastically. The little friends got to work immediately. They brought a saw, a hammer, nails and screws and searched for some strong branches. They tied the swing to thick wooden poles with very strong string. When the swing was ready, they all went to Balthazar's house to bake a cake. They cracked eggs and stirred the butter. The mixer whirred away and wooden spoons clattered in bowls. The little bee's kitchen was soon filled with delicious smells. They decorated the cake all over with cherries, raisins and walnuts. Let's put candles on it! Flutter said. Yes, ten candles, Dolly nodded. Let's write a letter to Harry, Berry said. Dear Harry, please come to Balthazar's house at lunchtime. We'll all see you there. Can you take it to Harry, please? Berry asked. 
But don't say a word about the cake and the swing, Dolly shouted after him. Balthazar and Stanley put the cake on a round table and carried it out of the house. The little ants were playing hide and seek and suddenly the smallest ant ran right into the table. <coughs> you tipped the table over! The cake's ruined! Balthazar moaned. The cake? What are we going to do now? Dolly sobbed. Harry Hedgehog will be here any minute and he won't have a cake. The little ants felt very sorry for what they'd done, but one of them had an idea. Let's gather lots of fruit and berries and build a big pile. It'll be almost like a cake, won't it? That's a good idea, Stanley said. I know Harry loves fruit. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Stanley and the little ants began to gather fruit in the forest. Eddie the potato beetle, Zephyr the dragonfly and Rosita the rose beetle helped them too. They soon had a very big pile indeed. Stanley stuck ten candles on top of the fruit just seconds before Bubble arrived with Harry Hedgehog. Happy birthday, Harry! They all shouted. Wow, look at all that delicious fruit. My favourite. Thank you very much, the hedgehog exclaimed. We've got a surprise for you, Dolly said, and they led Harry to the swing. Harry was very surprised. What a big swing. Can I use it? He asked cheerfully. Yes, we built it for you. Hooray! Now I can swing too! Thank you so much! Then they stood around the fruit pile and began to eat. They ate and ate until nearly all the fruit was gone. They stuck the leftover apples and pears on Harry's spikes and he took them home to his mossy house. Harry went to bed with a happy smile and looked forward to tomorrow when he'd swing with his friends again. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Carnival Winter was nearly over and the forest friends were sitting in Dolly's house. It's time we started getting ready for the carnival, Flutter the Butterfly said. What are you going to dress up as? Berry asked. It's a secret, Flutter answered. You have to keep your costume a secret so that we can surprise each other at the carnival. You're right. Let's go home and get started. We've only got a few days left, Balthazar said. Berry quickly made up his mind. He decided to dress up as a mushroom. He used a white sheet for a cape and made a hat out of a red bowl. He painted white dots on the bowl. Dolly made a flower costume. She cut leaves out of green paper and sewed them on a green blanket. That was her dress and she made petals out of purple paper. Balthazar the bee and Betty the bumblebee worked together. Balthazar dressed up as a devil and Betty dressed up as an angel. Bubble the baby beetle sat in his hammock and started to make his lion costume. The lights were on in every home in the forest on the night before the carnival. Everybody was working on their costume and busy preparing for the celebrations the following day. Then the big day arrived. The forest friends decided to have the carnival at Stanley's house. They all worked hard and decorated the stag beetle's home with coloured streamers and balloons. While this was going on, Rosita the rose beetle was busy making delicious cakes at her house. Dolly, Leapy and Eddie the potato beetle all lent a hand. Then the time came for them all to put their costumes on. Stanley dressed up as a dice and waited for his friends. The first to arrive were Berry and Dolly. 
He was dressed as a mushroom and she was dressed as a flower. Then Balthazar came as a little devil and Betty as an angel, with Flutter in a crab costume. Leapy looked just like a cactus. Bubble was dressed as a lion, Eddie was a chef and Rosita was a bunch of grapes. Her dress was covered in shiny balloons. The firefly was dressed as a pencil and the flea was an octopus. Sam came as a soldier and one of the little ants was dressed up as a pancake. Suddenly Zephyr the dragonfly burst in crying. It's gone! My beautiful princess dress has disappeared! I washed it and I hung it out to dry but the wind blew it away! Zephyr sobbed and the others tried to comfort her. I don't need my soldier hat, I've got a sword, Sam Snail suggested. No, that's for boys! I had a lovely princess dress but the wind blew it away! We'll make you a new costume, Leapy said, a sun costume! Zephyr liked this idea very much. This yellow curtain will make a great cape, Dolly shouted. And these yellow pieces of paper can be the sun's rays, Stanley said, and took some of the streamers down. They cut, glued, sewed and stitched, and the beautiful sun costume was ready in no time. I can lend you my little lantern. The pencil doesn't really need a lantern, laughed the firefly. Thank you. Zephyr said. She was so happy, she blushed. The forest friends danced and sung all night and agreed Zephyr had the most special costume of all. As what could be more special than a sun that shone at night? Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The hot air balloon. One summer afternoon, a storm blew up in the forest. Dolly the ladybird and Berry the snail sat watching it from the spotty house. The wild wind twisted the trees and blew the roofs off houses. The rain came down in buckets. When the rain and wind finally stopped, the two friends took a look around the forest. Look, Dolly, the wind blew this tree over, Berry said. And the rain washed away my flowers, Dolly sighed. Leapy the grasshopper came rushing in. Dolly, Berry, come quickly, someone's lying in the meadow. The friends found an oil beetle lying in the meadow. Oh, what happened to you? What's your name? Who are you? I'm Adette the Oil Beetle. I live up in the mountains, but the wind blew me down here and I hit my head really hard. My wings are weak and I can't fly. I don't know how I'm going to get home. The Oil Beetle sniffled. They lifted Adette up and carried her into Leapy's house. Don't worry. Dolly said eventually. We'll help you get home. That afternoon, Balthazar the bee, Flutter the butterfly and Stanley the stag beetle all came to see Adette. They tried to think of ways to help her get home. The best thing would be a hot air balloon, Stanley said. But what could we use to make a balloon? Berry asked. We could use blankets, pillows and sheets, Flutter suggested. And curtains and towels too, Stanley added. They got to work immediately. They stitched all the blankets, curtains, sheets and towels together. It took a while to get everything finished, but Adette helped as much as she could. Every day she was feeling stronger, and even her head had stopped hurting. 
It's ready, said Stanley. Thank you, the oil beetle replied happily. Hooray! We're flying! Berry exclaimed. Wow, it's beautiful! We can see the whole forest from here! Dolly laughed. It started to get dark. When they eventually arrived, Adette cried out, Hooray! I'm home! Thank you. Please stay the night and watch the shooting stars with me. We'd love to, the little friends said. Adette quickly made them something to eat and gave them delicious cakes and tea. After dinner, they all sat down in front of Adette's house and waited for shooting stars to appear in the night sky. Hooray! I saw a shooting star! Berry exclaimed excitedly. Me too! Dolly said. And me! added Stanley. They went into Adette's house when it got colder and sat and watched the stars through the window. They all made a wish and fell fast asleep. As she slowly drifted to sleep, Adette wished that someday she would meet her new friends again. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Pebbles. One sunny summer afternoon, Dolly decided to cook a strawberry cake. She asked Stanley the stag beetle and Balthazar the bee to go and collect wild strawberries in the forest. The two boys set off. Balthazar soon spotted a pebble in the middle of the path and he started to kick it along. But Stanley also liked the look of the pebble and he tackled it off Balthazar. That's not fair, Stanley. I found it. I want to kick it down the path. It's my pebble now. Find another pebble to kick. But I found it, so it's mine, Balthazar moaned. There are loads of pebbles. Find another one, Stanley said, trying to close the argument. But Balthazar wouldn't leave it at that. He pushed Stanley out of the way so that he could kick the pebble. The two of them continued to push and shove until they both tumbled down the hill into the babbling brook. Alfonso the Cricket came out of his house to see what all the noise was about. What's going on? he asked. It's all Stanley's fault. He took my pebble. It wasn't your pebble. I was just a better kicker. That's enough of that, Alfonso interrupted. Come inside, get dry, and then tell me all about what started this silly argument. The two boys muttered to themselves as they followed the cricket into his little house. They hung their wet clothes out in the hot sun and sat wrapped in towels while they waited for them to dry. Alfonso gave them both a glass of lemonade and a biscuit. The sun's warm rays soon dried the clothes. Stanley and Balthazar munched sulkily on their biscuits. They told Alfonso all about what had happened and how they had rolled down the hill into the brook. I've got a whole collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Can we have a look? Balthazar enthused. Of course, Alfonso said with a proud smile, and he placed a large box on the table. Where did you find all these lovely pebbles? Stanley asked. Down by the brook. You can collect some too if you like. They filled their baskets with pebbles. They sat sorting them and organising them until it started to get dark. The little stag beetle and the bee boy said goodbye to their cricket friend and started to walk back up the hill. They soon came to Dolly's house. The little ladybird girl shouted angrily out of the window. Where are the strawberries? Oh dear. The strawberries? We forgot the strawberries. Dolly, look at the lovely pebbles we collected with Alfonso. What am I supposed to do with them? Make pebble cakes? I asked for strawberries. 
But we forgot, Stanley admitted, and he told her the whole long story. Well, I see. Let me have a look at those pebbles, if you didn't bring any strawberries. We should paint something on them. This one looks just like a little house. And this one, I might paint a smiley face on it. That's a super idea. We can invite the others and spend all day painting pebbles. Great! The next morning, Berry the Little Snail Boy arrived at Dolly's house with Flutter the Butterfly, Zephyr the Dragonfly, Leapy the Grasshopper, Eddie the Potato Beetle and Bubble the Baby Beetle. Where are Stanley and Balthazar? Berry asked with a disappointed sigh. Here we are, the Stag Beetle and the Bee Boy announced, and they proudly presented Dolly with a big basket of strawberries. Oh, thank you, the little ladybird girl said, and she mixed the cake while the others got to work painting the pebbles. When they had finished, they invited Alfonso to come and see their exhibition. They all look really good. I'll bring my pebbles tomorrow and we can paint them too, the cricket told his friends. When the strawberry cake was ready, they all sat around the table and ate every last crumb. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Puppet Show one sunny summer morning, Berry knocked hard on Dolly's door. It's the puppet show today. Let's go and tell Flutter and Eddie too. Berry and Dolly's first stop was at the pretty butterfly's house. Wake up, Flutter. The fleas are going to give a puppet show. It's Snow White. The little friends stopped in front of the potato beetle's house. Eddie, are you coming to see the puppet show? But Eddie didn't open his door. Hurry up, Eddie, we're going to be late, Berry shouted, but there was still no answer. Flutter gently turned the handle and popped her head inside. Are you still in your pyjamas, Eddie? Berry grumbled. Hurry up and get dressed. I'm not going. My tummy's covered in nasty bites. It really itches, Eddie sobbed. Let me have a look, Dolly told him. They're not bites. You've got chicken pox, the ladybird girl told her sickly friend. There's no need to be scared. I've had them already and I had thousands of spots. I'll go and get Dr Owl, Dolly announced. He'll know what to do. Dr Owl soon arrived and took a good look at Eddie. Hmm, it's definitely chicken pox. Chicken pox is contagious, Eddie. I'm afraid you won't be able to go to the puppet show. Contagious? Does that mean Berry, Dolly and Flutter are going to catch my chicken pox? No, don't worry. You can only catch chicken pox once and they all had it last year. You mustn't scratch your spots. There'll be another puppet show, Berry reassured him. Don't be sad. You'll get better soon, Dolly smiled. Berry, Dolly and Flutter said goodbye to the little potato beetle and hurried off to see the puppet show. The puppet show was already set up in the meadow and the puppeteers were five fleas. The curtains soon opened and the puppet show began. They all watched the rest of the puppet show and clapped loudly at the end. The flea puppeteers came out from behind the tent and took a bow. It's such a shame that Eddie couldn't come with us, Dolly said with a sad smile. I'm sure he'd have really liked it. Why don't we put a puppet show on for him? Dolly suddenly suggested. That's a super idea, Dolly, Flutter said. 
and the three friends were soon all hard at work. Flutter drew dwarves, Dolly drew Snow White and the Prince, and Berry drew the Wicked Queen. Then they cut their drawings out and glued them onto sticks. When they were ready, they all crept under Eddie's window and tapped on the glass. The little potato beetle opened the window and looked out. Let the puppet show begin, Berry announced, and the three friends started the show. Thank you, he said. You're the best friends a beetle could have. Dr Owl came back ten days later and all Eddie's spots had gone. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Scooter One spring morning, Morris the Maybug decided to make himself a scooter. He spent the whole day sawing, drilling and hammering. And when he was finished, he painted the scooter black. Then he hurried to show his super scooter to his friends. The boys were all playing basketball in the meadow. Berry, Stanley, Balthazar, Eddie, Bubble and Alfonso. Look at my new scooter. I made it all myself. Can I have a try? No one can borrow it. It's mine. I only want to try it for a minute. We'd like to have a go on it too, then we'll give it back. I'm not lending it to anyone, Morris told them again. The boys were so busy arguing that they didn't spot Eddie, who grabbed the scooter and rode off on it. Stop! Bring it back! It's my scooter and I didn't lend it to you. I'm not lending it to anyone. Eddie slowed down and Morris soon caught up with him. Give me my scooter back! Here you are, it doesn't go fast enough anyway. Not fast enough? Look at this! Not fast enough? You can hardly keep up with me! He shouted with a laugh, but he didn't see a big pothole in the middle of the road. Watch out, Morris! Balthazar, Berry and Stanley all shouted at once, but it was too late. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Morris, Balthazar said in a snooty tone. What happened, Morris? Are you badly scratched? Why aren't you boys helping him? The rose beetle asked the others. It's all Morris's fault. It doesn't matter how it happened. He's really hurt himself and you should have helped. Come back to my house, Morris, and I'll clean those nasty scratches for you. Rosita sat Morris down and washed his wounds with a warm, wet cloth. It doesn't look that bad now. Morris started to sob. It was all my fault because I was mean to the others. If I hadn't been so mean, it wouldn't have happened. Then don't be mean next time. Thank you for all your help, Morris said as he left. It was nothing. You'll feel better soon. Morris limped all the way back to his house. The minute he got home, he jumped into bed and he was soon fast asleep. The little Maybug woke up the next morning with a wonderful idea. He got out his paints and brushes. I'm going to paint you pink. Look at you. I've brought this for you. Thank you for helping me yesterday. It looks lovely. Did you paint it? Rosita asked. Yes, I thought you wouldn't like it black. I love it. I'm going to ride it over to Dolly's house. Be careful. Have a safe ride. Morris walked home and he was about to eat his lunch when he heard a knock at the door. Hello, Morris, Balthazar said first. We came to see if you were feeling better. Much better, thank you, Morris shrugged. 
I promise that I won't take your scooter again, Eddie said with an apologetic smile. I haven't got it anymore. I painted it pink and gave it to Rosita. But I can make a new scooter, Morris said. I promised Rosita that I won't be mean again. Everyone can have a go on my new scooter when it's finished. Hooray! Bubble shouted. Now would you all like a piece of apple pie? I baked it myself. Morris soon finished the new scooter. He painted it dark green. All the friends gathered in the meadow the next day and took turns to have a go on the two scooters. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you, Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need teams to play a proper game. Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle and the match began. That's it, run, Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come on, Reds! Come on, Blues! The crowd cheered. Frank, you can't touch the ball with your hand, the b-boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up. Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Berry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ouch, my arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr. Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes, I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr. Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster, and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again, Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules. Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. 
The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Easter eggs. Easter had arrived at last. Flutter the Butterfly Girl, Rosita the Rose Beetle, Leapy the Grasshopper Girl and Zephyr the Dragonfly all gathered together at Dolly's house to paint eggs for Easter. How many eggs do we have to paint? Rosita asked. Now let's see, Berry is certain to come and visit tomorrow, but so is Balthazar, Stanley, Eddie, Bubble, Alfonso and Sam Snail. That means we need to paint seven eggs each. We'd better get started. Oh, they look so pretty. I'm sure that the boys will love them, Flutter told the others. It's time to go home. I've got to get up early tomorrow to make pancakes for the boys, Flutter said. I'm going to bake scones, Rosita said. And I'm going to make an apple strudel, Dolly added. All the girls got up bright and early the next morning. Flutter hurried into the kitchen, put on her apron and mixed up a big batch of pancake batter. Rosita popped her apron on and started to knead her scone dough. Dolly rolled her pastry out and Zephyr made a sponge roll. Leapy woke up feeling quite excited. Boys never get up early, I've still got plenty of time to bake an apple pie. And she put a big basket of apples on the table. Oh dear. The basket of apples tipped over and knocked her pretty painted Easter eggs onto the floor. They were all ruined. Oh, my eggs! Now what am I going to do? What will I give to my visitors? The little grasshopper girl sobbed as she ran to Dolly's house. Dolly, I've smashed all seven of my eggs! Help me! I haven't got time, Leapy. I'm busy baking. But I've still got two unpainted eggs. If you paint them quickly, they'll be dry by the time the boys come. Rosita! Oh, my eggs got smashed! Can you help? I'm too busy baking, but you can have these three white eggs. You've still got time to paint them if you hurry. Flutter! Help! I've got to paint my eggs all over again. The first lot got broken. All of them? I am sorry, but I can't help now. My pancakes will burn. You can have these two unpainted eggs I've got left over. Something terrible has happened, Zephyr. I've broken all the eggs I painted yesterday. Please help me because I haven't got time to paint another seven eggs. Leapy complained to her dragonfly friend. I know who can help you. Come with me. The two friends ran through the forest all the way to a cave. The spider stumbled sleepily from his home. Oh, can you help us, spider? Zephyr asked. Leapy's eggs all got broken. And now she has to paint new ones and there's not much time left. The boys will be coming to visit her soon. If I have to, the spider grumbled. Thank you. You're very kind. Leapy got out all her paints and brushes and the two of them started to paint the eggs. The spider could paint three eggs at once. We're ready, Leapy said with a happy laugh. And then she thanked the spider for his help and she arranged the pretty eggs in a dish. There soon came a knock at Leapy's front door. She opened the door and was greeted by all seven boys at once. Happy Easter, Leapy! They had all come to see Leapy, who offered them a dish and they all chose a pretty Easter egg. I haven't got any cakes to offer you, I'm afraid, Leapy said in a whisper, and then she told them all about what had happened. Don't worry about that, the boys laughed. 
We ate strudel at Dolly's house, scones at Rosita's house, pancakes at Flutter's house, and sponge roll at Zephyr's house. Our tummies are full.